Good morning everyone, trust you're all keeping well and keeping safe. Let me start by uh, <clears throat> sharing with us a little story. A minister was preaching on the evils of drink. Firstly, he said if it was up to him, he would gather up all the wine everywhere and he'd dump it in the river. Then he moved on to beer, to, to lager, and said he would like to get all the beer, all the lager, and dump it in the river. And then all of the forms of alcohol, alcohol pop, spirits, everything, he just wants to throw it all in the river. The worship leader's face began to show a worried look. His eyes were looking around nervously because his closing hymn was, Shall we all gather at the river? Praise God. Three male pastors went to the National Pastors Conference. They were all sharing one room and when they arrived back from the first night's meetings they just sat and began to talk together suddenly one of the pastors said let's confess our secrets let's confess our secret vices to one another i'll start my secret vice is that i love to have a little flutter when i go away speaking i nip in and put a little bet on and if there's a slot machine in the hotel, I, I slip in a few quid. Never. The second pastor, my secret advice is that I just love to drink. He says, uh, when I go out of town, I like to take a little nip of something. And sometimes one drink leads to another. Never. The other two say to the third, come on, what's your, what's your advice? What, what's yours? I don't think I can say, he says, uh, go on, you can, go on. We won't say a word to anyone. Reluctantly, the third pastor says, my secret vice is gossiping. I can't wait to get out of this room. <laughs> no, no, uh, come on, let's, let's pray for you. You, you, you need deliverance. <laughs> okay, I wasn't one of those three. This morning, I wanna continue our conclusion of the series the church that jesus is building it's week 29 or part 29 in our series and this is about the fourth or fifth part of our conclusion a house of power filled with fruit and gift let's read together our text and this morning it's slightly different we have a little bit more uh, text to read let me read from 1 corinthians chapter 12 verse verses 1 through 7. He says, now about gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, some, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray by mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, or no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. Now let me read now Galatians chapter 5 verses 14 through 25 for the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command love your neighbor as yourself if you bite and devour each other watch out for you will be destroyed by each other so i say walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are you you are not to do whatever you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law the acts of the flesh are obvious sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry and witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fits of rage selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit 
the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Praise God. Let's just pray. Father, we thank you today for your goodness and grace towards us. We thank you, Father, as we've read your word, you have spoken. And we pray in these few moments together that you would speak into our lives and minister to us. Help us to leave here different today than when we came in because we've met and heard from you. We ask this, Father, in Jesus' name. And we all say, Amen. Praise God. Well, the book of 2 Peter says this to us. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 12 through 15. So I will always remind you of these things, even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have. I think it is right to refresh your memory as long as I live in the tent of this body, because I know that I will soon be put aside as our Lord Jesus Christ has made clear to me. And I will make every effort to see that after my departure, you will always be able to remember these things. Well, what things? Well, let's read 2 Peter 1, uh, verses 3 through 9. His divine power has given us everything we need for a godly life through our knowledge of him who has called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these he has given us his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness knowledge, and to knowledge self-control, and to self-control perseverance, and to perseverance godliness, and to godliness mutual affection, and to mutual affection love. If you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But whoever does not have them is nearsighted and blind, forgetting that they have been cleansed from their past sins. Well, this let me say to us this morning, it's vital that we constantly remind ourselves and are reminded of God's divine power that's with in us all. Constantly we have to understand and be reminded that God has laid before us all we need to live an empowered life. He wants us to understand that we each need to receive and release in our lives. Hopefully, as we continue each week to read these verses from 1 Corinthians and Galatians, we're doing just that. Our God is an empowering God. He wants us to be empowered and he wants us to be empowered to do the work that he has called us to do. You know, in your workplace, your boss empowers you. He empowers you to do the work that he set before you. And this, this isn't rocket science, is it? Clearly, if you work on computers, guess what? Your, your boss will give you a computer to work on. You need the relevant program to outwork and fulfill what your job entails. Let me suggest your bosses will supply you with what you need. They empower you to do the work that's been given to you. Whatever your job, if you're a bus driver, guess what? You're given a bus to drive. You're given all the things you need to do that job. This isn't a word of knowledge. This is a word of truth. And let me say God is no different. He gives us what we need to complete and fulfill all the tasks that he's given us in our lives as individuals and as a church together. That's why it's so important for us to fully understand and appreciate what God has given to us in the Holy Spirit. 
He's given us a power to receive and a power to release in our lives, a power to witness, a power to serve him and others, a power to live life and live life to the full praise God. Up to now we've covered four gifts, four fruits. Today I want to cover the remaining five gifts and next time I'll finish off with the last five fruits. Brilliant. Okay then. First gift, miraculous powers. To another, miraculous powers. Throughout the New Testament and throughout history, we, we've heard of miraculous things happening around the world, happening in people's lives all over the world and even in the UK and things that could never have been possible except through God's intervention. And let me say it like this. There are events which rely utterly on the direct intervention of God and which produce results and manifest the extraordinary power of God. In the book of Acts, we see uh, a few simple uh, examples. Well, let me read to us from Acts chapter 20, read from verse 7 through verse 12. On the first day of the week, we came together to break bread. Paul spoke to the people, and because he intended to leave the next day, he kept on talking until midnight. It's okay, I'm not going to talk until midnight. There are many lamps in the upstairs room where we were meeting. Seated in a window was a young man named Eutychus who was sinking into a deep sleep as Paul talked on and on. When he was sound asleep, he fell on the ground and from the third story and he was picked up dead. Paul went down, threw himself on the young man and put his arms around him. Don't be alarmed, he said. He's alive. Then he went upstairs again and broke bread and ate. After talking un until daylight, he left. The people took the young man home alive and were greatly comforted. Paul here releases this gift. The dead man raised to life. There was no quick, quick fix, but there was a God fix. Miraculously, this man was brought back to life. And again in Acts chapter 12, uh, verses 7 through 11, this is Peter's miraculous escape from prison. It says, Suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel <coughs> said to him, <coughs> Sorry, Put on your clothes and sandals, and Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of prison, but he had no idea what the angel was doing, what was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked uh, the length of one street, suddenly the angel left. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. Again, undoubtedly, this was a, mir a miraculous situation, a miraculous event, and God would have us to desire such a gift, the, the power, the ability to release God's power through the Holy Spirit in our lives. And the King James Version probably makes this gift more understandable. It says, to another, the working of miracles. Clearly, in all of our lives, situations, circumstances come where we could release this gift, and God would have us to desire such a gift, desire a gift that the Holy Spirit would use us and move through us in our lives for the common good of the body. And secondly, gift uh, prophecy. Clearly, the scriptures teach us that prophecy is for the building up, the lifting up of the church, not to pull it down and not to judge it. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 3, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire the gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies 
speaks to people for their strengthening, encouraging, and comfort. To prophesy is to speak under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit through God's leading. It's not God speaking through the Spirit to condemn or judge or pull people down. S simple words like, God loves you. They can be prophetic words into someone's situation. Do not worry, God understands your present situation. Again, these words can bring comfort and encouragement to someone or many people. Again, the scriptures teach us all to desire, eagerly desire the gift of prophecy. Why? I suggest it's because God constantly wants us to build up because Jesus is building the church and he will uplift his church. Eagerly desire this gift, God said. And the third gift, distinguishing between spirits. Let me cover this with the, the words of John. We read in 1 John chapter 4, uh, verses 1 through 6. Dear friends, do not believe every spirit. But test the spirit to see whether they are from God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. This is how you can recognize the spirit of God. Every spirit that acknowledges that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. But every spirit that does not acknowledge Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist which you have heard is coming and even now is already in the world. You, dear children, are from God and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. They are from the world and therefore speak from the viewpoint of the world and the world listens to them. We are from God. And whoever knows God listens to us, but whoever is not from God does not listen to us. This is how we recognize the spirit of truth and the spirit of falsehood. Sometimes there will be occasions when God reveals through the Holy Spirit counterfeits or people with a spirit of falsehood seeking to deceive the people from the truth of Jesus and the gospel message. Let me give you an example we can read in, in Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 19. It says, Once when we were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a female slave who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money from her owners by fortune telling. She followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, These men are servants of the Most High God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so annoyed that he turned around and said to the Spirit, In the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. At that moment, the Spirit left her. When her owners realized that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to face the authorities. And God truly empowers his people by giving the Holy Spirit to, re to, to release his presence and power in given situations to reveal truth, to reveal the true identity of a wrong or false spirit. And the final two gifts, four, uh, gifts four and five, speaking in tongues and uh, interpretation of tongues. Much has been said on this subject and no doubt much more will be said in the coming years ahead on this particular subject. This morning I want to say to us what the scriptures say. We read in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 10 it says to another miraculous powers, to another prophecy, to another distinguishing between spirits, to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to another still the interpretation of those tongues. And then in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the verse 4 verses, it says, Follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit, especially prophecy, for anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. 
But the one who prophesies speaks to the people for their strengthening, encouraging and comfort. Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. And then in verse 39 we read this. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, be eager to prophesy and do not forbid speaking in tongues. Obviously, in a given setting, the church, it becomes unrealistic and unorderly if everybody just did their own thing. So in context with his teaching, Paul, through the scriptures, is telling us and everyone that these gifts should be used in an orderly and fitting way. Orderly and a fitting way could be translated like this regular arrangement fixed succession. Remember the church that Jesus is building that we covered in part one. Foundation, structure and covering. And here at OCC we seek to do things from the front in regard to giving a word of wisdom, prophecy or knowledge or not because I or we are seeking to control but so that everything is done in, a, in an orderly and a fitting way. And speaking in tongues is not of the devil. Re scripture reveals to us an, an interpretation of a message in tongues is for anyone who would seek God and desire that gift. Let me read to us again from 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. Undoubtedly, it says there are all sorts of <coughs> languages in the world, yet none of them is without meaning. If then I do not grasp the meaning of what someone is saying, I am a foreigner to the speaker, and the speaker is a foreigner to me. So it is with you. Since you are eager for gifts of the Spirit, try to excel in those that which build the church up. For this reason, the one who speaks in a tongue should pray that they may interpret what they say. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. I put it to us that God would have us to speak in tongues because when we speak in tongues, we speak directly to him. We speak directly to him and we edify our own spirit. In other words, we are being built up internally, personally. So we could say there are two uses of the gift of speaking in tongues, personal use and communal <coughs> use. God would have us to desire the gift of speaking in tongues, uh, you know, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, in, not just to speak in tongues, but to empower us to grow personally, empower us to witness and to serve, empower us to build ourselves up in private and to, and to just... Uh, and just maybe God would use us personally to speak to the body communally through the interpretation of a message in tongues. Praise God. So, in closing this morning, we covered a lot of stuff over the last uh, couple of weeks in, uh, in regards to, to gifts and uh, the fruit of the Spirit. We've looked at plenty of stuff in regard to the church that Jesus is building. And together, guys, we can and we're going to build something great for God. And, and what I can say, and I can say this with uh, true uh, knowledge, that, that Jesus is building his church through us. Unless God builds the house, the laborers labor in vain. And I'll let you into a secret. We're not going to do it without the Holy Spirit's power. We're not going to do it without the Holy Spirit in our lives. And we're not going to do it unless we do it together it's from unity where the blessings flow we read that don't we in, in psalm 133 which said to us how good and pleasant it is when god's people live together in unity it's like precious oil poured on on the head running down on the beard running down on aaron's beard down on the collar of his robe it is as, it is as if the dew of hermon were falling on mount zion for there the Lord bestows blessing, even life forevermore. We're not going uh, to build if people are withholding gift. 
We're not going to build if people are withholding the ability that can be used to further and fulfill the work set before us. God wants us to receive so that we can release, so that we can release gifts and fruit into the body. We're not going to do it and fulfill it if we stop and, if we stop and put a cork on the flow of God's giftings. We're not going to do it if we, if we, if we put a, a cork on, on God's presence through the Holy Spirit in our lives. Together, everybody doing their part causes growth. And that's what the book of Ephesians teaches us in chapter 4, verse 16. From him, the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, as each part does its work. And this morning, as we sit together, I want us all to reflect for a few moments on what God is speaking to us in our own lives. Speaking to us in regards to receiving and releasing in our lives. There may be only a few of us gathered this morning, but what I want to do is this. If you feel that God is speaking to you about receiving and releasing, I want you to stand. And that can be an incredible step of faith in itself. But let me tell you one thing this morning. It expresses and it shows your desire to serve and to follow God. Follow Jesus wherever he takes you, wherever he places you, into whatever service he calls you. Truly, we are called to serve. And if you want to receive the infilling of the Holy Spirit. You know, you just stand and receive this morning and God will stand and deliver to you in your life. Truly, there is more than this. Because with God, there is always more. With Jesus in our life, there is always more. The scripture tells us he is able to do immeasurably more or, or exceeding abundantly more than you can think or imagine according to the power at work within you to prophesy to speak in tongues to 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 have gifts of miracles we have an incredible father an incredible father whose storehouse never runs dry his storehouse never empties so there is something for you you are not forgotten Please stand, if that's you this morning, and we'll just pray together. Thank you. Father, I thank you this morning for every person <clears throat> in this room who stood. And I pray also for those who are sat in your presence. And I pray, Father, as we've heard your word read, as we've heard what your word says to us, I pray that each one of us would receive to release that we will receive your Holy Spirit in our life and we will release it to your glory, that your church will be uplifted, will be edified and comforted. We ask it, Father, in Jesus' name, for his glory. Praise God. And we all said, Amen. Well, praise God. Have a great day. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.